right? Now the second type of drag is, it's even more interesting. It's called as an induced drag. Right? Now I would probably add the word lift in front of that just to make it more clear. It's called as a lift induced drag. Okay. All right. Now let's see what that is. So what is the reason for lift production? Or what do we do to produce lift? We have seen, we have taken a plain paper, we have kind of introduced camber to it, we have seen how the profile works and how we built up a lift producing surface. So what, what produces lift? What is required to produce a lift? When I blow a paper, why is it, why is it coming up? What have I done there? Uh, we are creating a pressure difference basically, right? Uh, between underneath the aerofoil and above the aerofoil, we are creating a pressure difference. It doesn't matter having a low pressure. If you, if you, if you manage to create a low pressure above and equally low be behind, uh, underneath, it's not going to produce lift. So basically what we need is a pressure difference between the lower part of the aerofoil and the upper part of the aerofoil, right? So pressure difference is what, uh, what causes uh, the lift production. All right. So now, uh, let's look at a having. I'll, I'll draw a very small diagram first and then we will go into a detailed diagram a bit later. All right. So let's look at the aircraft from say, say from the front, which means the aircraft is facing you. Mm, or let's put the other way around. Let's, let's look at the aircraft like this on the rear part. The aircraft is moving away from you. All right. So you have the wings here. Right? Uh, do you know, have you seen these, uh, uh, this is called as wing tips, uh, or it's called as winglets, sharklets and stuff, Airbus calls it sharklets, have you seen those at the tip of the wing? Right? Do you know why these, these are, what, what is the use of this? To make it more beautiful? Yeah, that's a reduced drag, so what kind of drag is that? It's what we're talking about here. The lift induced drag, lift right? Drag. But remember, you're adding an extra structure here. Would I have been like this otherwise? You're adding a structure here, and that is going to introduce this thing here, parasitic drag. So it's not like you can act, you can do whatever you want. You are actually it's a thin line between uh, reducing one and increasing the other. So we'll come back to that. So just giving you a heads up here. So let's. This is a this is a normal wing here. Perfect. Now, what is the pressure underneath the wing? It's going to be a higher pressure. And above is going to be a lower pressure. I'm trying to explain lift induced drag as simple as possible. There's a lot more going into it. We will we will do that step by step here. So the low, uh, lower part of the wing is a higher pressure, and upper part of the wing is the lower pressure. Cambering, all those things we have seen that, right? What do you think is the tendency of the air? The tendency of the air is always to go from a higher pressure to a lower pressure, right? So you see what happens is if if you take the wing, let me draw the side view. That will make it much more clear. Right, a rectangular wing, which means it doesn't taper, it just goes all the way straight. What about the pressure underneath? It's going to be higher. The pressure above the wing is going to be lower. And what the air wants to do is the air wants to kind of leak all the way through from underneath the surface and reach above the surface, obviously because of the pressure difference. It cannot do that directly because the airfoil is there in its way. So it finds its way out all the way. Which direction is the aircraft moving in this picture? It's moving away from you. Right? That side, right? And therefore the air finds its way all the way through the trailing edge to reach the upper surface. Right? Now think about this. Think about the same phenomenon happening at the wing tip. Right? Let's draw the wing tip here. At the tip of the wing. Right? So underneath the wing it's a higher pressure, above the wing it's a lower pressure. The air wants to actually leak out from the lower end. To the higher end. Where is it easier for the air to do it? If you take the entire length of the wing, where do you think it would be easier for the air to find a way to reach out uh, to the top surface? Wing tip. Wing tip, that's right, because it's an easier way. There is no wing here, right? There is no wing surface here. This, this structure, unfortunately, it has a wing, this thing, a winglet. Otherwise, this is the easiest way to actually come all the way here. Now you see what is this guy going to do here? When you put it like this, you're kind of blocking that. You're not letting the air come all the way up. It's kind of a wall standing here. So we'll come back to that again. So did you understand wingtip is that particular area where this particular leakage of air, so you can term this as a leak. Leakage of the air can happen more uh, throughout the wing, right? So the air is going to leak all the way from underneath the wing 
and come all the way up. You see what happens here? It leaks all the way and reaches straight there. Right? Now again think about this. You have a natural airflow. And how is that happening? So normally the air reaches a tip. It follows the curvature. You see the Covanda effect and stuff. So you have already seen that. And the air kind of gets blown down. Right? So it just goes all the way like this. Right? Perfect. Now this is how the natural airflow is. What do you think an air that is leaking through the wing, wing tip, sorry, is going to do to this air that is blowing above? There's a natural airflow. There's an airflow coming like this and that's going to push this air towards this side. Right? So what is going to happen is this airflow is going to have a component of like this. Does it make sense? Because the air is pushing from that side. Right? So, um, where is the aircraft? Yes, so this is the wing, this is the aircraft here. So normally the air comes from here, it bumps all the way up the wing, up the wing and goes. Now you have an airflow coming like this, pushing it towards this side because of the leak. Right? So if I redraw this diagram, this is there in note, so don't worry, it's all there. See, all these things are there in note. Right? So if I redraw the diagram, the air comes from here and gets deflected towards this side. The air again comes from here, gets deflected this side. That's because the air is leaking all the way and kind of reaching it, pushing it this side. Does it make sense? But sir, that wall is blocking the air, right? You are... No, no, the wall comes later on. We are kind of uh, finding a way out to prevent this by putting that wing tip there. So initially, the wing tip is not, they have not on the wing tip here. They are not wing tip, winglet. Right, it's not there. Uh, but what you said is right. If I manage to keep a winglet, this thing won't happen. That's what. That's why we keep that there. Yeah, that right? air goes off the other way and it does not come back to the. Correct. It hits the wingtip, uh, wingtip, and stops there. That so that wingtip yeah, kind of yeah. breaks the circulation of air or leakage of air from underneath the wing oh, where the pressure yeah. is high Understood. to over the wing where the pressure is low. Right. So you can see that. Yeah. What What do we have here? This is a wingtip. So if I take this as a wingtip. What do we have here? What does what this wing attached to? So this is a wing tip. That's wing root, yes. Basically it's connected to the fuselage, right? There's a fuselage on this side, wing tip over there, right? So this is basically the wing root, that's the right term. Wing root and this is the wing tip. So because of this leakage of the air, above the wing, the, the, the air gets deflected towards the wing root right understood now think about the lower surface of the wing right so let's draw the lower surface here all the way straight coming up to here same so the air is see, not, not normal airflow is the, the so how is the normal airflow this is the wing profile the air comes all the way follows the profile and goes like this. So that's what I've what I've drawn here. The normal flow of the air. Right? Now because there is an airflow that is coming from the lower end towards the upper end, which is happening more through the wing tip, it is going to deflect the air towards the wing root. Did you understand? Now think about this aircraft again here. The normal airflow is over the wing. It's it's blowing over the wing down. And if you have an airflow coming like this, it's going to push that airflow towards the wing root. And there's a leakage happening, uh, happening throughout the wing tip. This is the reason for wing tip vortices. So we have studied about wake turbulence, uh, especially when lighter aircrafts they follow heavier aircrafts. This is one of the reasons for that. Well, we'll come to, come to that. So what I'm trying to did you understand this? What why is the why is the wind why is the airflow on top of the wing getting deflected to wing root? 
because of the leaked air is kind of pushing it towards the wing load. Now, what do you think is going to happen underneath the wing? So I've drawn under this this figure is in such a way they're looking at the wing from the underneath from the from the bottom of the aircraft right here. What what do you think is happening? So the air normally, see remember the air is going to blow through the upper part and lower part of the wing, right? So the air normally blows like this and goes off. The trading edge. This is the leading edge, this is the trading edge, right? But having the fact that the air is trying to leak from underneath the wing to above the wing, and since the air knows that that's going to be easier on the wing tip, what do you think is the natural tendency of the air? Is to is to go towards the wing tip so that it can leak quicker to the upper surface, right? So this flow is going to get deflected more like this. This is the lower part, this is the upper part and then trying to kind of leak out and reach the upper part through wingtip. Now look at these two diagrams together, right? You have the upper part of the airflow moving towards the wing root. What about the lower part of the airflow? It is moving towards the wingtip, right? So here... That is, that is not uh, only going upward, right? Yeah, correct. So it is trying to go up or up and it knows that the best place to go is the wingtip so the air underneath is going to go towards the wing tip which comes all the way reaches up pushes the air above towards the wing root right it's a cycle now this is towards wing root did you understand well this is a very detailed elaboration uh, you probably might not require so much of knowledge uh, but probably I mean, this might actually help you uh, but did you understand what is happening above the wing and below the wing so above the wing the air is blowing towards the there's there's a, there's a flow towards the wing tip below the wing there's a net flow towards sorry wing root below the wing there's a net flow towards the wing tip yes yes Anuj. Sir, so what is happening like if the tip goes to the towards the finger axis is something happening yeah no, no, no. It is slipping the aircraft. You have a see. That's what this is the. We'll come back to that. This is not actually happening this way. This is the worst case scenario, right? We will. I'll tell you why. When does this happen, and how? Why does this happen in the first place? A bit later, but uh, this can happen, right? The air always has a natural tendency to leak from the high pressure underneath the wing to low pressure above the wing, and that the best place for that to happen is the wing tip. The broader the wing tip the more the leakage surface right and what is that leak going to do to the air that is blowing over the surface it's going to push the air towards the wing root and looking at underneath the wing since the air knows that if it can reach the wing tip it can easily reach the upper surface which is a lower pressure area the air has a flow component towards the wing tip under the wing and towards the wing root above the wing understood Right now, let's draw another diagram. I'll send you a picture of all these things. Don't worry. So if I if I draw more like a um, more like a top view of the wing, and draw, I'm drawing a rectangular wing just to make it easier. And think about this as a transparent wing, which means you can see through the wing. Right now, look at what do you understand about the flow above above the wing? So this is the wing root this is the wing tip how is the flow going to be above the surface above the wing it's going to be towards the wing root right and what about the flow underneath the wing i'll draw that in blue here and dot it yeah right and then it kind of leaks all the way pushes it and then it goes towards the towards the wing root Kind of cycle, right? That's right, making kind of a cycle, exactly. So if you look at this aircraft again, which means I'm looking at the aircraft, the aircraft is moving away from me. Think about it, you have an airflow above the wing that is moving towards the wing root and the other airflow trying to move beneath the wing towards the wing tip, right? And this will create a circulation and the circulation is going to be strongest at the tip of the wing.
has got to be it, it, it reduces in strength as you move away. That's right. So you can see how the circulation is happening, right? There is one of the airflow that is mo trying to move. Uh, this is a this is a wing tip. There is an airflow that is trying to move towards the wing tip, pushing it, and then the airflow over here tries to move towards the wing root, right? So this creates a circulation where they intersect. And you can see that it's going to be formed stronger the wing tips, and as it go towards the fuselage, it reduces because the wing is on its way. Now think about the circulation here. The circulation, this is what is called as the wing. So where is it happening? It is happening at the uh, wing tip, and it's like a vortex. It's a circular vortex. Therefore, it's called as a uh, wing tip vortex, and its plural is wing tip vortices. And if you look at the wingtip vortices and if an aircraft that is moving away from you, what is the direction of the wingtip vortices of the right wing produced by the right wing? It is anti-clockwise. So rotation over here is anti-clockwise. This understanding will also help you. We'll talk about wave turbulence later. And over here, this will be clockwise. This is an important understanding. If you look at an aircraft that is uh, from the rear, that is producing the wingtip vortices from the rear side, aircraft moving away from you, the right wing is going to produce an anti-clockwise wingtip vortex, and the left one is going to produce a clockwise uh, wingtip vortex.